Hi, today we are going to see one more topic from Informatica that is stored procedure transformation. What is stored procedure? Stored procedure is a pre-compiled collection of SQL statements which is similar to an executable script. We can create the stored procedures and we can run within the database. You can run the stored procedure with the execute SQL statement in a data database client tool just as we run the other SQL statements. It is not like standard SQL, however we can use user defined variables, conditional statements and other powerful programming features with the stored procedures. The main purpose of the stored procedure is to check the status of the target database before we load it, before we load the data into it and we can check whether enough space exists in the database or we can do some calculation or we can recreate and drop the indexes drop and recreate the indexes then we will see one small example for stored procedure transform for this I have taken department table as the source what we are going to do is we are going to do one simple calculation that is minimum salary, maximum salary, average salary and sum of salary department wise we are going to do now with the help of the stored procedure. It is not like other transformations we cannot create the stored procedure transformation without creating the stored procedure in the Oracle database. I will show you now. This is expression transformation. Okay. This is the stored procedure transformation. It will automatically connect it to the backend and will get the procedure to the Informatica. So we have to create the stored procedure first. I have written one small procedure which uh, helps us to calculate the department wise maximum salary, minimum salary and average salary this is the stored procedure and I am going to create this in the Oracle if it is already there we have to drop and recreate it mm, it's already there so And again, I'm recreating it. Procedure SP AGG compiled. Okay. Now we can connect it to the Oracle to get the stored procedure. Okay. I am going to pass the department number and I am going to get the salary from the employee table to do the aggregation that means calculating the maximum minimum and average salary sum of salary. We should pass it in the, in the same order and department number here we, we need to connect it to the target is a simple one workflow already have created it for this I am using one target table average EMP salary and make sure that connection object is set okay and make sure the target load type is normal Okay, and I I am using the table name average EMP cell. Just check whether the table is empty. Okay, table is empty. We can run this workflow, which contains this stored procedure transformation.
okay it's got succeeded and we have to check how many rows we have got in the target it's around four i think it seems to be okay so we got department wise maximum salary minimum salary average and some salary and here is the query we are having that select maximum from emp we can check this in the client tool so that we can make sure that whether we have got the result or right or wrong we can remove this we can remove this that max cell 2850 you can use the department number also here let me will check for example 32850 950 1567 and 9400 everything is right so the stored procedure result what we got it from the stored procedure is correct and uh, let me be something about the stored procedure transformation what are all the things we can do? The stored procedure actually must exist in the database before creating the stored procedure transformation. One of the most uh, useful features of the stored procedure is the ability to send data to the stored procedure and we can receive data from the stored procedure. There are three types of data that we can pass between the integration service and the stored procedure. They are input output parameters, return values and status codes. Input parameter is the thing what we send it to the stored procedure that is the department number if we want to do some calculations we will be sending the for example calculating the tax means and we will be sending the price of an item after performing the cal calculations the stored procedure returns to output output parameters the amount of tax and the total cost of the item including the tax likewise we can in send the input and we can get the output and return values depending on the de database implementation either it may be the user defined variable that it can act similar to the single output parameter or it may return an integer value the status code what is the purpose of this status code status code notifies whether or the stored procedure ran successfully to know that the status code is required but we cannot see this value but integration service uses it to determine whether it continue or stop the stored procedure stored procedure are of two types connected and unconnected the flow of data through a mapping in connected mode also passes through the stored procedure transformation that means it participates in the uh, the data flow but unconnected means it's the standalone uh, one and mainly it is used before or after the session and uh, there are some procedural runs actually there is some um, procedure uh, we have to mention the stored procedure type here we have mentioned that it is normal normally the connected stored procedures will always be stored procedure type normal only the other types also available and depends upon the situation we can specify it preload of the source mint it is used to verify the existence of the table or performing the joins that means before the session retrieves the data from the source post load of the source means after the session retrieved, uh, retrieved the data from the source the stored procedure starts running this is useful for removing the temporary tables and preload of the target that means before the session sends data to the target this is useful for verifying target tables or disk space in the target system post load means mainly used for recreating the indexes on the database that that will be started only after the session ends session ends or session sends the data to the target okay 
These are all the things you should know about the stored procedure transformation. Thanks.